Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. In this video, we're going to go over the bench testing of the Centroid Acorn, the CNC for PC C86 ACCP interface board, and of course the uh, ClearPath uh, SDSK servos and their power supplies and uh, the cabling. Um, one thing I'd like to do is stress the importance of doing a bench test like this. You see I have a bench here. It's plastic. It's not the most ideal surface because of static. Um, I've got my acorn on the bag that the acorn came in. The C86 ACCP here will plug into acorn so it'll be on the anti-static bag. Um, you can look over here, the uh, Power Hub 4 is on its uh, anti-static foam, foam that came in. And then the two power supplies are in a chassis, so they're resting right on the plastic. Anything with circuit boards, um, make sure you discharge yourself uh, anti-static by touching the metal frame of something that's uh, grounded. Um, and uh, you should be safe. And then never touch circuit boards by any of the electronic components always hold it by the by its edge i want to stress the importance of bench testing um, i have seen where folks take all their parts build their control cabinet stuff it in the control cabinet and then they put their motors on their machine that's not the way to do it what you want to do is you want to do things very systematically and you want to test each subsystem as you go that way if there's a problem you can catch it as you go through the process if you wire everything up and then you put it inside your cabinet and you have issues, then you're, you're going to end up tearing apart your cabinet and you'll find it's more difficult to work with inside the cabinet um, than it is to work um, on an open space. So what I like to do first, I like to get Acorn and the CNC PC communicating first with the Ethernet cable. Get it configured so that you have the ability to fire up CNC 12 and talk to Acorn. Um, when you can see the CNC 12 screen, that means you have communications established with Acorn. That's the first step. The second step is to put one drive and one motor on to Acorn and get that motor turning. When you've successfully done that, then add your subsequent motors. If there's two, if you're a lathe, you've got two motors, put two. If you've got a mill, you've got three. If you've got a fourth axis, put four. In my case, I have four motors. And spoiler alert, I've already tested this system. Because we're using pre-molded cables with pre-molded connectors, we're using the C86 ACCP, I'm gonna plug in my motors directly to C86 ACCP. I'm gonna plug in my power supply to Power4 Hub that's supplied by Technic. It's another beautiful thing about this Technic system, that power hub is only about $50 and it gives you a central location to plug in your motor cables without terminating anything. The connectors are on both ends. Um, it, I showed this earlier, but here's the pre-molded cable uh, for the motor side of the signal cable and here's the, the uh, Minifit Junior connector that we're going to plug into on C86 ACCP. So this is done for you, and the same with the motor, the uh, power cables. The, the Sabre connector is on one end, that goes into the uh, Power 4 hub. The other connector, which is a moldy connector, similar to this one, will plug right into uh, the ClearPath SDSK motor. This, this setup is truly plug and play, uh, in my opinion. Um, in fact, uh, when I did it, I just plugged in the motors and I plugged in my my uh, C86 ACCP, I fired up the software, I loaded the ClearPath uh, drive profile in CNC12, and sure enough, I got motors turning. Everything was, was running, and that was great. Um, so in this video, I'm going to go ahead and plug in all four motors to my C86 ACCP because there's no terminating. Okay, everything's just plug it in. If you have a drive, and a motor that you have to wire physically, then do one motor and one drive at a time on your bench. Get that going first, get the issues resolved with that one. Work through the one motor first. And once you've got that motor done, then add the second, the third, and the fourth, and get them all configured the same way as you did the first one that you got going. Then after that, add your e-stop button, your physical e-stop button, test it. You configure it in the inputs, test it, make sure it works. 
and then uh, you can configure your limit switches and you can test them. You can use the diagnostic screen on CNC 12, which is you press key Alt and the I key and it will toggle that screen on. You'll have virtual LEDs. Anyway, so the point being is add one subsystem at a time, prove it out and move on. You can even put your VFD on the bench. You can wire it up to Acorn, its outputs and inputs and you can put your you can wire a cable over to your motor and you can bench test that as well once all that's done then i will lay out my panel and i use a blank sheet of aluminum buy from the metal supplier it's 50 52 and it most usually has a skin over it so i can do all my layout and i position all my components on that piece of aluminum we'll do that in the next video <clears throat> and lay all that out and mount everything up and then i'll wire it and then I'll plug the motors and everything back in and I will test it before putting it in the cabin to make sure everything's all right. Because it's far easier to do that sort of work on the bench than it is in an enclosed cabin on the machine. So once the motors are turning and everything's working on that back panel, then I'll put it on the machine and I'll mount up the motors and then uh, finish wiring everything. Now in my case, <clears throat> If you recall, I have a motor that go on the y-axis that is in between the cabinet and the column. And it was suggested that maybe I should cut a window out in the cabinet so I have access to that motor. And I may consider that. I'm going to look at that because it's a good idea. If you have to service it, um, you'll, need, you'll need the ability to get to that motor. So uh, I'm going to consider doing that. We'll see. If not, I want to tune everything with the back panel laying on the bench and connect with the motors connected to the machine and then do the clear path uh, auto tune feature and get that going. And when I'm satisfied with that, then I'll put the cabinet on and I'll mount the back panel inside the cabinet and do all the finished wiring. Okay, um, so a couple of things I want to touch on before I move, get too far along is um, ClearPath, one of their features is they claim noise immunity in their drive electronics. They've engineered the drive and the motor and the system to be noise immune. Well, what does that mean for you? Well, <clears throat> if you're not really good at following typical CNC control cabinet wiring and you uh, have a little bit of uh, noise from something, hopefully that will assist you. There's no substitute for using good uh, wiring practice when you're wiring up a CNC control. Whenever possible, like I previously mentioned, is keep, keep your high voltage items on one side, keep your low voltage items on another side, and if they have to cross, try and cross at 90 degree angles. If you have any shields that need to be grounded in a cable, take them to one ground point. Um, of interest to, to know, there is no shield that I can see in the uh, in the clear path cable so that's that's their noise immunity feature um, their design uh, also let's talk about power supplies so here's here's clear path uh, IPC5 um, basically it's taking the best of two worlds it's taking uh, a switching power supply and the capacitors from an unregulated power supply, putting capacitors inside of this thing to give the stiffness of a switching power supply, yet to have capacitance to be able to absorb regenerated energy from the servo motors. What is regenerated energy? You're pushing those servo motors and then you ask them to stop and come back or you have inertia, you have force, there's energy that can be generated and come back into the system. I'm oversimplifying it. But that energy has to go somewhere. That's what capacitors do. They not only filter the, the DC supply, but they absorb energy. So it gives, if there's anything that's coming back to the power supply, it absorbs uh, that energy rather than potentially damaging uh, the power supply. In my discussion with the applications engineer at Technic, um, this is obviously the first choice for a power supply. The second choice would be a toroidal power supply. Basically it's got a large, looks like a donut, a wound donut, and it has a large capacitor or a series of capacitors and it has a bridge rectifier to give the proper voltage. In the case of ClearPath, it's 75 volts DC. So, um, or under. You, the max is 75 volts. The clear path motors run optimally at 75 volts. So you want to get a toroidal power supply 
um, sized appropriately um, from a capacity standpoint, up to 75 volts, 70 volts would probably be okay. Um, but you have to size it. And again, the ClearPath applications engineers are there to help you size um, your power supply based on your uh, motor requirements, your machine requirements, and we discussed that in the intro, so I don't want to belabor that point. But I opted to buy this. Um, it is rather expensive, but it also makes the whole system plug and play with uh, pre-molded connectors on the power supply cable. This will operate at both 120 volts and 240 volts. And it's got the Sabre connectors up here that will feed the Power 4 hub. Um, so uh, anyway, yeah, Select, selecting the correct power supply is, uh, is important. I want to give you a look, I'll give you a look at C86ACCP. That's the connector side um, where we're going to connect the signal cables to the clear path motors. And you'll notice I labeled them uh, X, Y, Z, and A on the top. This uh, other connector right here is if you hardware pair an axis. So if you have to have two motors to drive an axis, you can hardware pair it here. It'll take the step and direction signals and split it out for you um, on this board, all right? There are jumpers that you can see right, right here along the bottom. The ones that are concerning us are these right underneath each, each uh, Molex connector. Um, these are the active axis. So right now, let's see if you can see that, they are set to off right now. All, all, all four of them are off. Okay, yeah, you can see them there. We're gonna go ahead and enable all four of those jumpers to uh, active because we're gonna be using four motors. If you're not using an, ac an axis, like you're not using the A, then you're gonna leave that one off. Okay, so moving the jumpers over. Okay, let you see that. I've moved them all over to the on position. Now, this, this sets of jumpers here, and here are for slaving, depending you want to slave an x-axis or a y-axis. So look at the, uh, the documentation uh, for the C86ACCP um, that came with your board. All right, on the back side here, this is the side that will face ACORN, you'll see some jumpers as well. They are jumpers that say hard and soft. You'll see four sets of them. We are going to leave them to hard, okay? We're not going to let software enable the axis, each individual axis, we're going to leave them to hard. And then also, uh, if you look right here, this terminal block, you see a little jumper in it. That comes from CNC for PC already in there. We're going to remove that, and we're going to connect a pair of wires to output relay number one on ACORN, and we're gonna set that to no fault. So when ACORN and CNC 12 are in their ready state, ready to go to work, that will close, and basically effectively do exactly what this jumper is doing, is closing this input on the board and enable the drives. Now above it is the power supply input. We're gonna supply the same 24 volts that comes from the ACORN uh, power supply. That top terminal is 24 volts and the bottom terminal is COM. This will work from 12 or 24 volts, but because it's on an ACORN system and you get 24 volt power supply with ACORN, just use, just go ahead and feed it 24 volts and be done with it. Now over here by my little finger, this is the fault relay output. Okay, you'll see there is a relay right here. It gives you dry contact output. If any of the high level feedback signals from the SDSK drives uh, send a signal back that the, that the drive is faulted, we're gonna use that for the drive fault input on ACORN. Okay, so I want to show you this here first before we get started. It has a normally, it has a common, a normally closed, and a normally open uh, contact. And that's it. That's all, that's all we need to do. So basically all the jumpers on this side, leave them alone. All right, the, uh, the uh, ACORN enable 
right here is set to off. We're not letting Acorn enable the drives via the enable outputs. We're going to use the no fault input and I believe that's the best and easiest way to go is when the no fault relay is closed it will enable this and it will then this will enable all the uh, ClearPath SDSK motors. All right, so I'm going to get started. I'm going to get this thing connected to Acorn and I'm going to wire it. I'm going to I'm going to wire the no fault circuit output. I'm going to provide the 24 volts here and I'm going to provide a pair of wires here that go to output relay one normally open. All right, and then I'll show you that uh, from uh, an overhead view and we'll go over that, okay? Okay, let's go ahead and install the C86 ACCP to Acorn. These pins here will made up with the uh, step and direction headers for uh, axis one through axis four. So let's go ahead and get them in. Loosen up all these screws so that you can get these pins into uh, Acorn. Make sure the board is flush with the headers and then go ahead and snug down all the screws. Take them one at a time, make sure you get them all snug down. This is important because you want a good electrical connection but you also want a good physical connection with C86 ACCP and Acorn. Make sure you set the jumpers like I discussed here a few minutes ago on C86 ACCP. It's easier to do it off of Acorn than on Acorn. And you only set the enable jumpers on the back side here to the axis that you're using. We're using all four axes, X, Y, Z, and A. We're not using a slave, so that doesn't apply here. Okay? Um, when bench tasting Acorn, a lot of guys forget to put this 24 volt jumper from the spare 24 volt terminal around to one of the two 24 volt in uh, terminals on the inputs. This is input one, two, three, four, and then this is 24 volts in. This is input five, six, seven, eight, and then imp 24 volt input. You can put on either one, whichever one's most convenient. They're actually physically tied together. So uh, that jumper is installed. It's, it's required in order to make the inputs uh, function. So don't forget this jumper. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and wire the 24 volts to the C86 ACCP. And I'm just going to grab it from the 24 volt input terminal here on Acorn. So I've got a little wire. I tend to use the same colors that Centroid uses. I use yellow for 24 volts and then I use um, black for common. So there is a spare, and obviously everything's disconnected here. There's no power, don't want to do any of this hot. So there is a spare common terminal right here next to the, uh, the power supply common on Acorn, so I'm gonna grab that. And then I'm gonna go around here to uh, C86 ACCP and I'm going to wire the uh, common first. And then I'm going to wire 24 volts, which is the top terminal here. And they're screened on the boards right here. It says power and it says 1224, which is the top here. And then common is the bottom one here. Okay, and then now while I'm in the neighborhood, I'm gonna remove this little red jumper here that I showed you earlier, right underneath the power connector. I'm gonna remove it, and I'm gonna replace it with a pair of wires that are going to go to relay output one normally open. That enables C86 AC, ACCP and that in turn enables signals to go out to the SDSK motors. Okay, I'm having a little trouble so I'm going to unplug the block from C86 ACCP so I can see better. So these 
like Acorn, uses a similar type of block. These will unplug from C86 ACCP. Okay, give them a tug, make sure they're all right. I'm gonna reinstall this connector. All right, now we're gonna go to, uh, this is output relay one, there's a number one right here on the board. Here's output relay one. And we're gonna wire it to common and normally open. Give it a little tug, make sure I got it, good. And normally open. So that when you reset CNC 12, it resets Acorn and it closes this. When this is closed, it will close this circuit to the uh, C86 ACCP board. Now we're gonna go over here to the uh, no-fault terminal block. We need to wire one wire to common. And we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off as well. So I can get to it a little bit easier. And we'll put common to the wiper of the relay. And then we're gonna wire the other one to normally open. So when everything is okay, this will close. Okay, plug that in. We're gonna wire the normal, from the normally open contact, we're gonna wire that to input number five, which is typical for drive fault. So that's IN5, that's what I wired to right here, okay? The other wire I need to common, so I'm going to go ahead and, for bench test purposes, I'm going to wire it to common, Acorn Power Supply common as well. I'm just going to stack it with the C86 ACCP Power Supply common right here. I'm going to give it a tug, make sure it's in. All right, well, looks like my wire popped out for 24 volts. I didn't have it in all the way and I probably didn't tug on it enough. So let me pull that out, get this wired back in. Okay, it's all the way in. Tighten my screw. Okay, that's back in. That's all the wiring that C86 ACCP needs. So let's review. We've got 24 volts coming from 24 volt uh, power supply. Here's my power, my Acorn power supply. It's coming around common and 24 volts here. And then we have the 24 volts going to the top terminal on, two, on C86 ACCP. And we got common going to the bottom terminal on C86 ACCP. And then we have two blue wires coming from this lower terminal block going to the normally open and the common of relay number one, and then on this, on the fault relay output, we've got a common coming from Acorn common to the center terminal. And then we have, on the normally open, we have a wire coming out going into IN5, input five, which we will set up as drive fault. All right, now let's go over our, our power supplies. This is the Acorn power supply. I have the power cord that comes with the Acorn power supply wired up. I have my power strip here and everything is turned off right now. I'll plug that in. And then I have a jumper or a set of jumpers going over to the 24 volt power supply that keeps uh, logic power to the uh, SDSK servos. It'll plug in right here. And then here's that power supply. So again, AC coming around to feed this power supply. And then I cut that, the cable in half because I need one end to connect to voltage V plus, which is right here, and V minus, that's the black right here. This is just a straight 24 volt power supply. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this to power hub four. 
All right, and then as you can see here, Acorn power's already wired up. This power supply is already wired up. Now we have the IPC5. I'm gonna set it right here. And we are using the cord that I purchased for IPC5. It's got a plug on one side. It has this uh, Molex uh, Mini Fit Junior connector on the other side. I have not removed the jumper. This jumper has not been removed yet because I'm running it on 110. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. I'm gonna plug it into my power strip as well. Now I need the, uh, the cable with the Sabre connectors. This will plug into either one of these ports up here. I'll plug it into, say, the top one. And then the other one will plug into this hub, the Power 4 hub. Either one of those is fine. Now, let me show you the motor. Molex side to the SDSK motor, that's plugged in. Blue one is signal, black is power. I'm gonna flip that over. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and plug in the signal cables. As you can see, I've tagged them already. This is A. This is, you can see it hiding in here. It's the NEMA 23. So we're gonna put A to the fourth axis output of C86 ACCP. We're gonna take Z, gonna plug it into axis three. We're gonna take Y and we're gonna plug it into, and then we're gonna take X, which is X, Y, Z, and A right here. We're gonna plug this into the first axis. Now let's take our power connectors. And these don't really ma matter what, what connector they plug into on the Power 4 hub. They just need to be plugged in. And that's it. That's all that we have to plug in right now. This is all ready to be powered up. So let me go ahead and flip the switch. Everything comes to life. And uh, you can't see it, but on all the motors through the little plastic uh, covers where the access covers for the USB, they're all blinking green, which means the motors are in their ready state. You try and turn the shaft of the motor, that rotor is locked right now. So they're in their ready states. Acorn is blinking at one pulse a minute, so Acorn is booted up. Okay, so now we're all ready to go. We're ready to s configure the Centroid CNC 12 software, and we're gonna do that now. Okay, I've downloaded and installed the Okay, I've downloaded and I've extracted the ClearPath MSP software, so we're going to go ahead and install it now. Except we're just going to pick all the defaults. Okay, it's ready to launch. We got the launch clear path MSP checked. We're gonna click finish. And there's the clear path interface. I have the USB cable plugged into my first motor. That's my X axis. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my USB cable into the computer now. Found a motor, testing communication. And we've got a little message box here. Say so the servos can be tuned to provide excellent performance on a variety of mechanical systems from our factory. The motor has been set to tune to run standalone, no mechanics connected. After you have connected the motor to your mechanical system, run the auto tuner to optimize all settings. All right, so we've got that message. The motors are pre-configured. We're on the bench, so we don't need to do anything uh, they're optimized to run in standalone, not connected to a machine. We'll close this. And you'll notice up here at the top, it says uh, unloaded. That's its profile. 
and it identified the motor automatically. So here is my x-axis motor. It's the SDSK 3411S RLN 2-0-D. Uh, the only thing that we're going to change is we're going to change the encoder input resolution to 6400 because that's what Centroid will default to. And that's that. So um, I'm just going to go ahead now and I'm going to go over to the next motor. I'm going to unplug from the x-axis uh, motors USB port and I'm going to plug it over to Y. Found the motor. All right. Get the same message. We're going to close that. And here's our y-axis motor, which happens to be the same as the x. We're going to go over here. We're going to scroll down, select 6400, and that's that. Now I'm going to go ahead and unplug from the y-axis, and I'm going to plug into the z-axis motor now. And that's the 3432. We're going to go ahead and same thing. We're going to drop down 6400. And that's that. It's automatically saved. We're going to pl unplug from the Z. We're going to go to the fourth axis, which is my A axis. We're going to plug into it. Mount motor found, testing COM. And we got that message again. And we've got the 2321. So this is the NEMA 23. We're going to drop down, select 6400. And that should be that. Now we're going to open up CNC 12. Establishing COM with ACORN. It's coming up. All right. So we're going to go ahead and press F7 Utility. ACORN Wizard. Axis drive type, clear path SDSK and SDHP. We're going to click on it one time. I have to scroll down because I don't have a really high resolution monitor. We're going to click load drive. Are you sure you want to reset the configuration to drive clear path SDSK and SDHP defaults? We're going to click yes. Now we're going to go to input definitions. Okay, what we need now is we need uh, drive OK. That's going to go to input 5. And that's all we're going to do. And then e-stop OK. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check this because I don't have a physical e-stop button. So it's set to normally open. So that when we do, we'll use the normally closed contacts on the e-stop button and we'll set this back to normally closed. For now, we're going to leave it normally open. Out de output definitions, we're going to go to uh, no fault out. We're going to left click on it one time. We're going to drag it over and we're going to put on output one. Okay. Axis configuration. You'll see ACORN defaults to 6400 on all of them. We're going to change this one to linear for now. Even though it's a rotary, we're going to change it to A. And then we're going to leave these other defaults at 50, or 50 uh, inches a minute. That's slow enough that we won't get jerking with these motors. If you crank these way up right now when you're doing a bench test, you might uh, experience a lot of jerking with the motors. And in fact, ClearPath tells you to secure the motor so it doesn't jump off the bench. So leaving it at a really low max rate, low fast jog rate, and a low, a low slow jog rate uh, will help. Uh, we don't need to change any direction reversals. The rest of this will just leave OK. Um, homing and travel, we're not doing anything with this. We're going to do simple homing because we don't have uh, switches yet. Simple homing just means that when we press cycle start, it will uh, set home to uh, the current motor position. Axis pairing, we're not pairing any axis, or you would do that here if you're doing software pairing and you bought the pro license uh, or above, then you can use software pairing. Um, advanced, we're not going to dink with any of this. We're going to leave this all alone. Spindle, we don't have one. No touch devices, no control peripherals. We're not using a wireless MPG yet. Um, and the uh, 
db25 we're not using these preferences um, you can set these later so this is all we need now for bench test so i'm going to write the settings to cnc control and it says write these settings to the cnc control configuration we say yes click ok I got a power cycle acorn so all I'm going to do I'm going to unplug the uh, power cable for acorn from the power supply leaving everything else connected I'm going to wait about 10 seconds and I'm going to plug it back in and I'm going to wait for the heartbeat it's blinking rapidly right now. Now it's blinking at one pulse per second. I'm going to click OK. If you look down here, it says disconnected from CNC 12. So we're not connected to Acorn until we press OK. And we're back up. And now you notice it says reset initiated. This will always come up when you exit and re-enter the software. Press reset to clear. So we'll press reset. Okay. And you'll notice now we have X, Y, Z, and we also have the fourth axis, which is A. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that, but you can see the uh, LED is blinking rapidly under the uh, cap, letting you know that the motor is powered up and in its normal state. And in fact, the motor rotor is locked. So I'm going to turn these over, try to turn these over so you guys can see that uh, we have motion. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, see these motors jog. Here's the uh, x-axis. Positive. x-axis negative. y-axis positive. y-axis negative. And z-axis positive. z-axis negative. Looking good so far. And here's our a-axis. Turn a little bit slower, but it's uh, that's because the feed rate set down in the wizard. And there's the x the uh, a axis uh, negative. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's go back into this the utility wizard, and I'm going to set these motors to uh, under. Uh, axis configuration let's set these to one so that means when I call one inch the motors will turn one turn okay I'm going to go ahead and write the settings to CNC control configuration yes Be sure to close and restart CNC 12 for all changes to take effect. This is one where you don't have to restart ACORN, but we are going to go ahead and exit the software, shut down, exit. Okay, now we're going to restart CNC 12. Now you recall, every time you exit CNC 12, you'll get this message up here. It says reset initiated, press reset to clear. So we're gonna press that, just mouse over to it, click it. It's now cleared. And it says machine home not set. Jog all axis to their home positions. Press cycle start to set machine home. And let's just say all our motors are in their position. I'm gonna press cycle start. And now you'll see all our DROs are now at zero. So let's let's do a test. Let's uh, let's command G zero X one a feed rate of fifteen. Now watch our motor. That's this motor here. One turn. Okay. Now we'll do a G zero X zero, and that's it. That's a rapid move back to to to. Uh, zero and there it is let's do that to y g zero y one f fifteen and then we'll do a cycle start i was using alt s on my keyboard on x let's use cycle start on uh, the vcp um, the keyboard shortcut for cycle start is pressing alt s 
you can see it turned one revolution. All right, let's get that back, back to home, back to zero, G zero, Y zero. Alt S, and it came back. So one revolution, it completed one revolution. Let's do Z, G zero, one, Z1 F15 and cycle start. And it went one revolution, which is perfect. That tells us the encoders are set correctly in the uh, MSP software 6400 and they jibe with the uh, CNC 12 um, steps per motor rev. Now we'll get that Z back, G0, Z0. I'll do all deaths this time. And it came back. Now let's do A. Let's go G01 A1 F15. And there it's cruising a little bit slowly, but it's there. Now we're going to do G0 A0. Alt S. And there it is. So everything looks good. Okay guys, that pretty much concludes this bench test. Um, I want to reiterate that um, this setup will work really well for a mill or a lathe or a very small format machine um, using that, the C86 ACCP and just using the 10 foot cables. Of course, if you have the tools and you, want to, you have the desire, you want to cut down your cables, you can do that. You're going to need uh, crimp pins for Minifit Junior. You'll have to buy the shell, so if you want to shorten the cable. Um, you can do that. I recommend that you just buy the uh, cables from Technic. Um, again, this whole system, you saw how simple this was to put together um, and uh, the MSP software, all we had to do is go in and change the, uh, the encoder resolution to 6400. Um, again, that's what the default is in the Centroid. Um, you don't want to use anything much below 1600 steps in uh, the Centroid CNC12 software. Um, but in our case, we're going to use what Centroid recommends, that's the 6400. This is a small format machine. If you have a router, you have long cables. Um, currently, you cannot cut the long clear path cable and land it to the back of C86 ACCP. But uh, in conversing with C CNC for PC, they are working on a solution so that you can in land individual wires on C86 ACCP. Uh, Technic only has 10 foot and 55 foot cables. So on a small format machine, the 10 foot cables are great. Will probably work for 80% of the machines out there. If you need a long cable and you have to cut that cable in two and shorten it up, then uh, I think CNC for PC will have a solution for us soon. Uh, the next steps now will be to, uh, I'm going to ahead and mount all the equipment on the back panel. We'll do all the layout there and I'll show you how I do that and uh, get everything mounted up and then I'm going to wire it. Uh, we'll talk about all the components on the, cap, on the back panel. Uh, there'll be an e-stop relay on there. Um, I'll probably replace the 24 volt power supply that's Technic sent for the Power 4 hub uh, with a DIN rail mounted power supply. I use good power supplies. I'm using Meanwell power supplies. Centroid uses them so I figure if it's good for them it's good for me. So I'm using Meanwell 24 volt power supplies. And uh, anyway, we'll go over that whole panel layout, all the components used. I'll get it all wired up and then we'll run this test again, make sure our motors are turning. And uh, maybe we'll run a stock G-code program that's included in the Centroid CNC software to show that everything's working okay. We'll get an e-stop button wired up and so forth. It'll be just about all ready to go except for putting in the cabinet. All right, so until next time, talk to you guys soon.